So to undertake a geocoding in ArcGIS Pro, uh, we need to first create what are called locators. And we have locators here. There's an XY provider locator, um, which doesn't mean anything right now. And we have the ArcGIS World Geocoding Service, but that's limited in terms of what you can do with it without consuming credits in ArcGIS. And we want to make our own. So inside the Lecture 10 folder, we have the street network file and so this is the one downloaded from Ontario Scholars Portal and I'm just going to expand that and then expand the DMTI and you'll see CanMap Streets and I'll open that up and bring it into ArcMap. I'll put it at the top in fact here so we can see it and make the most sense. Right there. And I'm also going to change the background base map to streets so I can see street names. So CanMap Streets, let's have a look at the attribute table, contains street, which is the name of the street, from left, to left, from right, and to right, as well as a pre-direction and a prefix type. It contains other um, things such as the left FSA, right FSA, etc. This can help in geocoding in particular circumstances. But all we care about for simple geocoding is street and then having the from left to left, from right to right available to us. So I'll close that for now. Then I'm going to go to geoprocessing, create address locator. I'm going to choose US address dual ranges like so. The reference data will be the CanMap streets and it will have the role of primary table. And these will automatically be filled in since they're named as such within the street network file. It knows that from left is from left, to left is to left even, there's, even though there's no space there etc. as well as the directions and this is good enough for now for a basic um, locator service. So I'll click run. And it will take a couple seconds. Oh, in this case it failed. Why? Um, because I think I might, have, I might have one in there called that address locator. I'll just give it a different name here. Um, CanMap Streets create addresses too. And I'll run it. I think I had an older one in there probably. Oh. That first one's running. I think it's done. Let's check in the catalog view. So in the catalog view, I'll go down to locators and there it is. CanMap streets create addresses too. That's the one we wanted here. This old one I wanted to delete. So I need to remove that altogether. So there we have CanMap Streets create address too. So what does this allow us to do? Well, if we click on just the map tab, for example, um, I could locate places by clicking on the locate button. Locate, I can say search. It just brings me here. So in the search box, I can say, okay, show me somewhere like um, 60, um, university private. Oh, didn't find anything. What if I spell it right? Ah, it shows me now where 60 university private is. Just like Google Maps, right? Um, we could also, in the locate, say address inspector. And that'll make our little select into a crosshair. And whenever I hover over a street, it'll show me When it wants to start working here. There we go. Let's bring it over. Sometimes it's a little finicky in that the box doesn't stay open, but So I just hold my button down, then I can see it gives me an address, like 540 King Edward, 
I'm just holding my button down now, uh, my mouse button while I'm doing this to see these different things. If I double click, it opens it up. There's 591 Cumberland. So this is what's called reverse geocoding. It's getting a point on the map and getting the address from our address locator. So that's called reverse geocoding. Now, generally, we wouldn't use it just, you could do, use it for this, but that's not the purpose. The purpose of having an address locator or creating one is to be able to have a table of um, addresses like we have in our lecture 10 folder a CSV file called stores and I'm just going to bring that into my contents pane and if I open up stores like so I'll see that I have three fields one is the name of the store the address and the phone number and this is just taken from the internet so I looked for some Loblaws locations because obviously if you go to the Loblaws uh, website and you type in um, you know the, the names of Loblaws you'll get address information but it's not going to give you a point XY coordinate so the advantage of address locating address of having an address locator like this is that I can automatically have it create a point layer from these addresses I'm just gonna keep that open as I do this because it's important to see it at the same time so I'm going to go over to stores, right click, and I'm going to say geocode table. So on the CSV file, I choose geocode table, and up comes the geocode table um, step through wizard. This steps you through, or you can go straight to the tool. I'll just go through the step through to show you. So the first thing it says, like, does your address information have more than one field? Because sometimes you have numbers in one, one field, so the house number or building number, and then the name of the street in a second field. In this case, we have the whole address in one field. So I'm going to choose one field. And then next, input the locator. The only one available to us for this type of geocoding of a table is the one we created, not the one that comes with ArcGIS, because again, that costs money. So I choose the one we created, and I click Next again. And there's nothing to do here. Uh, this tool is attempt, it has attempted to map the fields in your data corresponding to such and such. Does the mapping look correct that we have this type of stuff going on? Don't know? Open the attribute table. Well, it's right there. Data field is address, so next. And then what you want the new feature class to be called. I'll just use stores geocoded to here. And then it brings you to the completed tool. So we could have started with a tool and just put our input table, our locator, single field, what field it is, address that has the addresses and the output, and then add to map after completion, and I click Run. Boy, it gives me this. Zero matched, three unmatched, and zero tied. So I have three unmatched addresses. And generally when that happens, that means there's a problem with my locator. Now, one thing we have to remember with these locators is that they're created for US data. So I'm going to click No here. I'll go back to Catalog, to my locator. I'll right click on it and go to Locator Properties. So once I'm in Locator Properties, I go to Geocoding Options. And I want to go down to scrolls a little fast with the mouse here where it says match with no zones and I want to click yes so we don't have addresses with zones here we just have a straight address and if match with no zones by default for US addresses is no so we want to put yes there click OK then I'll go back to my um, Oh, not there. I'm in the wrong one. I'll just remove my stores geocoded to, and I'll go back to my stores, right-click and say again, geocode table. And this time, I'm just going to go straight to the tool. Stores, input locator, the R locator, single field, address, 
and then stores geocoded three as the output, and I'll run it. And here we see we have two matched with 66.67% of the matches are matched because we only have three points. So out of our three, two are matched and one is tied. So for one of the locations, there's two possible places it found it could be. And so it says start rematch process. When we have unmatched or tied, we say yes. And that'll bring up the rematch address, dual pane pane. So in, the, in this case, it's showing what's been matched. So matched, this one was matched to 2210 Bank Street. And if I click the, that, it shows me the second one that was matched to um, 2085 Carling Avenue. So that's that um, one of them here somewhere. And then I click on Tide. And this is what I'm interested in. Now the tied one has one, two, three, four, five possible locations. And so this is a Loblaws. So it looks like probably location right here, probably this location is the one. Although it's not necessarily easy to tell just from uh, looking at here, that's too small to be a Loblaws. So it must be this one right here, A, or C. D. D is way down there on baseline. Let's see what's around. Well, I don't think it's there. So what I might do is just change the base map to imagery and this can help us figure out um, what we're looking at. Well, I don't think there's a Loblaws there. So I'll go back to A. Um, A looks like the good one. So there's the Loblaws right here. And that looks like a Loblaws. You see they have those two entrances at the Superstore Loblaws. And so A would be the correct one. That being said, that's how, how you would do it. And then finally, we'd have our stores with, we can close that rematch window, and we have, there's A. So it did, it did take, it just didn't show in the window. And we have geocode success now with our three stores. I'll make that a little bit bigger so you can see it. There we go. If I zoom to that layer, we'll see three stores all together. Zoom to layer. So those are the Loblaws. So now we actually have a point layer, a point feature class that was based on addresses by using an address geocoder and a locator service that we created from streets we downloaded from the internet.